a world of noise, he sought silence. In a world of convenience, he chose labor. This is not just about survival. It's about a return to the primal skills of our ancestors. Using only what the forest provides, he will craft a sanctuary from the raw earth. The foundation is laid, not with concrete, but with stones gathered by hand. The patient rhythm of the saw transforms a fallen log into the bones of a new creation. With an artisan's focus, he carves and shapes each piece of wood. Precise joinery is measured and cut, a testament to his practiced skill. The work is slow, deliberate, and meditative. A hand drill, powered by muscle and will, bores through the dense wood. The axe becomes an extension of his arm, shaping the timber with controlled force. The first creation is complete, a simple chair, a place for rest and reflection. With shelter established, his next need is fire, the ancient source of warmth and light. And where there is fire, there must be water. He devises a simple, effective filter. Life-giving water, purified by nature and human ingenuity. The forest is his home, his provider, and his canvas. He turns to the earth itself, gathering clay to build the walls of his sanctuary. With his bare hands, he molds the wet earth, layer by patient layer. The form begins to rise from the ground, an organic structure. It is a slow and ancient building technique, a partnership with the land. His small dwelling takes shape, a testament to his enduring effort. A moment of rest inside his creation, a space of profound tranquility. He continues to shape the clay, perfecting the walls of his earthen home. A strong timber lintel is set in place, framing the entrance to his domain. He hoists heavy logs, building the framework for a resilient roof. The stone and earth structure is nearly complete, awaiting its final cover. Thin wooden lathes are carefully tied to the roof beams. They are secured with clay, a natural and effective mortar. A waterproof membrane is laid over the lathes, a modern touch for durability. He ventures back into the forest, always searching for the right materials. He gathers living moss and plants, the final layer of his living roof. The roof is sealed with another layer of clay, a waterproof and insulating barrier. The structure is now camouflaged, almost disappearing into the hillside. The entrance is cleared and landscaped, creating a welcoming threshold. The ground is prepared for a proper floor. Large, flat stones are laid down, creating a durable and natural floor. He prepares the surrounding earth, ready to plant living turf. The living roof is completed, seamlessly blending the shelter with the forest. He sweeps the interior, a final act of making this house a home. He stands before his work, a man in perfect harmony with his environment. Inside his sanctuary, he finds peace, sheltered by the earth he shaped. The next project begins. The ground is marked for a new foundation. He weaves a bundle of sticks, creating a tool for a specific, unseen purpose. A small, round opening is left in the stone wall, a vent or a flue. Using the woven tool, he seals the opening with a mixture of clay and straw. 
smoke begins to drift from a newly constructed chimney, a sign of a working fireplace. He gathers small stones, the aggregate for his natural concrete floor. The stones are spread evenly across the floor of his shelter. Large flagstones are then carefully placed over the gravel bed. His focus now shifts to woodworking, preparing timber for a new structure. With an axe, he skillfully splits logs into usable planks. A drock knife is used for finer shaping, smoothing the rough hewn wood. A hand plane creates an even smoother surface, ready for joinery. He measures and cuts the pieces for a door frame. The components of the door are carefully assembled. More tees and tenon joints are carved, a timeless woodworking technique. Each piece is custom fit with precision. The finished door frame is sealed into the stone wall with wet clay. The clay fills every gap, creating an airtight and solid bond. He prepares natural pigments, grinding materials in a wooden bowl. The shelter is complete, a fusion of stone, wood, and earth. With his earth lodge complete, he turns his gaze upward to the trees. He steps out of his creation, a seamless blend of architecture and nature. He ventures into the woods to harvest timber for his most ambitious project yet. He inspects a fallen log, assessing its potential. With his knife, he begins to process the wood right where it fell. Useful materials are gathered from the forest floor. Nothing is wasted. The meticulous work of carving and shaping begins again. He carries the heavy logs, the building blocks of his new vision. The axe rings out, splitting wood with powerful, efficient strokes. He carves notches and joints, preparing the timbers for assembly. After long hours of labor, a moment of well-earned rest. The saw sings its steady song, cutting through the thick wood. The framework for a new structure starts to rise from the forest floor. He planes the wood by hand, creating a smooth surface. The pieces are carefully fitted together, a puzzle of wood and skill. He uses a mallet to secure the joints, creating a strong, rigid frame. The structure grows, reaching for the canopy. He carves a mortise joint, a display of advanced carpentry. The build is now complete, a magnificent elevated shelter. It stands as a testament to his vision and his tireless work. He fits the final piece of the platform into place. A mortise is chiseled out, ensuring a perfect, strong connection. He works high above the ground, confident and focused. The tools are simple, but the results are extraordinary. Each joint is a work of art, strong and precise. He inspects his work, ensuring the integrity of the structure. With an axe, he fine-tunes the fit of the timbers. A heavy beam is hoisted and set into its final position. It takes immense strength and balance to maneuver the heavy logs. The main support beams for the roof are now in place. On the platform, he continues his detailed woodworking. 
Wooden pegs are hammered in, securing the joints without nails or screws. He works on the finer details, perfecting the framework. Every piece is custom made to fit perfectly. The structure is a beautiful display of traditional joinery. He continues to add supporting beams, strengthening the frame. With the saw, he cuts the roof rafters to the exact length needed. The roof structure is now taking shape, a complex lattice of wood. The final roof beams are hammered into place. The intricate framework is a masterpiece of carpentry. He works on the support structure, adjusting a horizontal beam. He carefully shaves the post for a perfect fit. The beams are seated, creating a strong and stable upper level. The saw is used again to create smaller supports. He begins to work with bamboo, a versatile and strong material. Bamboo poles are fitted to the wooden frame, forming the walls. He prepares more bamboo, cutting each piece to the required length. With the axe, he fine-tunes the fit of each bamboo pole. The walls are methodically filled in, creating an enclosed space. The floor of the dwelling is laid with bamboo slats. His treehouse is a stunning example of natural architecture. It stands complete, a tribute to the forest and the man who built it. He harvests a large log for his next project. The outer bark is stripped away, revealing the pale wood beneath. The prepared logs are the raw material for a new creation. He begins the long process of hollowing out the log. He moves through the forest with a quiet confidence. The hollow log is prepared for its new purpose. It is carefully cut and shaped. The interior is scraped clean, perfecting the hollowed space. He begins his next masterpiece, splitting a thick log with an axe. He arranges the heavy timbers, laying the foundation for a new structure. He retrieves traditional clay tiles, saved for this moment. He begins processing rotten wood, another of nature's gifts. The log is expertly split down the middle with an axe and wedges. With the axe, he masterfully hews the log into a flat, usable plank. He sharpens his axe, a ritual ensuring every cut is clean and true. High above the ground, the framework of another house begins to rise. The work is demanding, requiring skill, strength, and focus. Smaller support beams are added, strengthening the structure. The roof line is established, a skeleton of interlocking timbers. He continues to build, his movements fluid and efficient. The frame is a complex and beautiful piece of wooden architecture. With the frame complete, he prepares to lay the roof. The clay tiles are carefully placed, one by one. The roof is completed, a shield against the elements. He stands back to admire his work, 
a solid, beautiful home in the woods. The finished house is a perfect marriage of natural materials and human skill. The work is never truly done. He carves a new component. He pounds fibers from wood, preparing another natural resource. At the base of a different tree, another, more ambitious treehouse is underway. The first step is digging the foundation for the support posts. The main posts are set deep into the earth, ensuring a stable base. Wooden slats are hammered into the posts, the beginning of a staircase. The massive support post stands firm, ready for the structure it will hold. Heavy floor joists are lifted and laid across the supports. He ascends his newly built ladder to continue work on the upper level. The patient work of sawing large timbers continues. He shapes the wood with his axe, carving out joints and supports. He uses a hand drill to create holes for bamboo wall posts. The drill bites into the wood, a slow but precise method. The railing is installed, adding safety and definition to the structure. Each piece is carefully fitted, a testament to his planning. He sits inside his creation, a moment of peace amidst the labor. He works on the floorboards, chiseling out space for the support posts. The staircase is assembled, one wooden step at a time. With the axe, he hews and smooths the timbers for the railings. A hand plane gives the railing a final, smooth finish. The wood shavings peel away, revealing the clean grain beneath. He works with an artisan's touch, perfecting every detail. The railing is meticulously shaped, a final touch of craftsmanship. He begins to prepare bamboo slats, the walls of his new home. The sprawling frame of the treehouse stands ready for its skin. Wooden pegs are hammered in, a traditional and strong fastening method. The bamboo floor is laid, slat by careful slat. He weaves the bamboo together with cordage, creating a strong and flexible wall panel. The lashing is tight and secure, a skill in itself. The bamboo walls are installed, enclosing the space. The finished treehouse is a breathtaking sight, a home among the leaves. But one final element is needed to make it a true home. He begins to carve a large log, the foundation for a stove. He meticulously hollows out the log with his chisel. A hand drill is used to create an air passage for the stove. The tool bites deep, completing the ventilation channel. The hollowed log is brought up to the treehouse. He lines the wooden stove with wet clay, a natural fireproofing. The clay insulates the wood from the intense heat of the fire. Small sticks are added to the clay mixture for reinforcement. The treehouse is complete, smoke curling gently from its new stove, a living home in the forest canopy. A very special thank you to the owner of the YouTube channel Norusaru Bushcraft for creating this wonderful video and allowing me to comment. If you enjoyed this narrative, please visit and support their channel at the link in the description below.